So what's going on YouTube Nation? Uh, I'm the Coffee Bean GM. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a character for Shadow of the Demon Lord. Now, it's pretty simple. Uh, procedure, kind of quick. I'm going to go through it step by step, so it'll take a little bit longer. But, you know, that'll give you an in-depth view of how we do everything and getting you a good idea on what characters consist of and how they're played. And it'll show you the really great uh, tables, the rolling tables that this book has as well. All right, so, you know, first thing we're going to do is, you know, um... Shadow of the Demon Lord has a very chaotic and very crazy sort of theme and setting to it. And, you know, I really encourage my players to use the random tables and just to completely randomize your character when you create it. Um, it creates a really good chance to really make your gears turn and make you think about how to connect all these intertwining, um, sometimes, you know, contradicting concepts that your character rolls up. Um, you know, I've seen some that really don't work at all. And it's you have to end up re-rolling something. Um, other ones just come out really fascinating, very interesting. So this one is going to be completely random. Um, we'll see what it is. Um, I am going to do a separate video on how to run a mage or a spellcaster because the rules for those are a little bit different. So if I roll the spellcaster the first time on this, then you know I'm just going to re-roll again and do something else. But you know we're going to start with our races or ancestries as they're called for this game. Now we have a handful. We got humans. But you pretty well, you know, your typical humans. We have changelings who tend to look like something else. We have goblins. We have clockworks. We have dwarves, and we have orcs. So there's a total of six here. So I'm using roll twenty here. Um, you know, I really, really like roll twenty a lot. It allows me to put on these graphics to show players and you know get them involved a little bit more with the visuals. So um, you know, first thing we're going to do here is create a quick character sheet. Um, we'll just leave the regular name as is. Now, you don't need to know anything about Roll20 on, on you know, creating the character or whatever. There's a couple different PDFs you can download for character sheets. There's some in the book. Um, if you do a search online, there's a handful. This one here I made for, you know, specifically for my use. And it looks like my image isn't working there. But anyway, um, you know, we made this one specifically for us. So, you know, the first thing here, huh, player, I'll put in Morgan. Character levels. We're going to make a level one character. You can't start with a level zero character for this game, but you know, more like a dungeon crawl classics kind of run that gauntlet. So we're going to start with a level one. All right. So ancestry. We're going to roll a one die six and see what we get here. Uh, let's roll six. Uh, so a two. So let's see. We are going to end up rolling a changeling. So. Now, when you read the books, it talks about the different changelings and a little bit about them and whatnot. But they have their little section here on creating a changeling that gives you all of your starting information. So, our starting attribute scores. So we're going to scroll down here to the attributes. Our strength is going to be a 9, so click that down to a 9. Agility is a 10, so we'll leave that. Intellect is a 10, and Will is a 10. So we're going to leave those. Now, you notice with our strengths and characteristics here, um, this is the value that the character or the yeah the PC has where these over here are the modifiers the modifiers are based on a uh, basis of 10 so if you have a 10 then it's gonna be a plus zero you know as these are if you have a one it's gonna be one if you have a two it's two if you have a three it's three it's basically whatever your number here is minus 10 is gonna be your modifier so in this case because I have a nine nine minus ten is minus one so that's my modifier to my strength so the next thing we're going to have here is perception, and it says here that it equals your intellect score plus one. So we're going to hop over to perception. My intellect score is 10, plus one is 11. So I get a plus one to my perception. My defense is going to be equal to my agility score. Agility is 10, defense is 10. So we're going to leave that one as is. Health equals my strength score. Strength is 9, so health, man, we're going to pop that down to a 9. Now this box over here is the current hit points, Why this box over here is your maximum hit points. The heal rating is based on one-fourth of whatever your maximum hit points is rounded down. So nine, you know, divided by four is going to be two and a half, so two and a half, and you block round it down and get two. Let's see, the healing rate, we did that. Size is going to be one. Size is right up here, so we're going to do one. One is your typical humanoid size of humans and elves and orcs and all that basic stuff. Um, I believe halfling, well, this is a book that doesn't have halflings, but what do we have near? We have dwarves, I think, which might have the option of being 
Yep, their size is one half our dwarf. Goblins are one half, and I believe it's maybe orcs. That's one half or one. No, no, not that one. Humans, humans can you can choose either between one half size or a one size, but you know size for the most part don't run into that too much use. But you know it does come up occasionally. So speed is ten. So we're gonna hop over to. Oh, I didn't put. Oh yeah, we do. Here we go. So we're gonna put this up to ten for our speed, and our power is zero at the moment. Power is used for casting spells or uh, basically determining what level of spells you could have. Uh, damage, insanity, and corruption are all zero right now because we don't have anything. Languages and professions, we speak the common tongue. So we're going to put common right up here in languages. And immune, damage from disease, charmed, and disease. Okay, so over here we have ancestries and paths. Paths are your character classes and stuff. Ancestry is your race. So ancestry, we're going to put changeling. For some of our ancestry talents, is we have immune. We are immune to, let's see, what was it? Damage from diseased, charmed, or so. We're immune to damage from disease, oops, diseases. We're immune to charms, oops. And we are immune to diseases. Now, it's kind of double stating it, the fact that I'm immune to damage from disease when I'm also immune to diseases, but um, there are cases where a disease doesn't cause specifically damage. So, um, the next one is iron vulnerability. Vulnerability. So you are impaired while in contact with iron. And impaired. If I hop over to the reference tab here, impaired gives me a plus one bane for attack and challenge rolls. So if I'm holding something iron, or I have iron shackles on, or something of that sort, I'll have a one bane to all of my attack and challenge rolls. So iron is my impaired while in contact with iron. And let's see what we got next. Shadow sight. So you can see into areas obscured by shadows as if those areas were lit. So basically it's a dark vision of some sort. So we can can see into shadows as if partly lit. Alright. And we have steel identity. Steel identity. So this one we can steal an identity. You can use an action to alter your appearance to match that of a target living creature, one or a half size that you have a humanoid shape of flesh and blood. So basically I can take on the appearance of something that is size one or one and a, or size half or size one that has a humanoid shape and is made of flesh and blood. Okay. Um, the body changes so you look like the target, though your clothing, possessions, and everything else remains unchanged. The effect lasts until you use the talent again. If you become incapacitated or touch an object made from iron, you immediately revert back to your normal appearance. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of shorten this up. You know, I can always open up the book to double look at it, but I'm just going to put alter appearance to size one or half humanoid creature. Now give me a quick idea of what it is. So that's our basics on our change lane. Um, that covers all of our starting attributes. It covers our special abilities. You know, all the basic stuff is done. So the next thing I need to do is decide, you know, what um, path am I going to follow? What novice path? Now there's four of them. There's priests, uh, rogues, warriors, and mages. So let me open up here to the paths. Alright, so I am going to avoid doing a magician on this roll here, because that's a completely different beast right there. So, um, as long as I don't roll a 1, so I'm going to do 1 die 4, and if I get a 1, I'm going to re-roll it there. Okay, 3. So we're going to be rolling up a rogue. So I'm going to hop over here, let's see, oops, pass, now this pass is going to be a rogue. Alright, now this is where you get a whole bunch of cool... Um, abilities and everything like that through all your various paths. I'm uh, going to start the basic thing just to fill this in and then we're going to hop back over to the changeling and go through all of the different details on the changeling. So let's see. We have a rogue. 
a level one rogue. So the attributes, I have to increase two attributes by one point. So I'm gonna pick over now. Obviously, dexterity is the big one here. Now notice it says you can increase two by one. That doesn't mean I can increase one skill by two points. I have to pick two different, I'm sorry, attributes, two different attributes to increase by one. So let's see, I'm gonna go with agility, obviously. We wanna get agility up. Um, and you know that minus one to the strength is kind of a bummer. So and I don't see will or intellect being a huge use right off the bat. So yeah, we're gonna increase our strength by one. So that gives us a plus one to our agility, and everything else is a zero. Okay, our characteristics. Our health goes up by plus three. So we're going to hop right over here. Three, make that 12, make that one 12. And see our healing rate goes up, because one-fourth of 12 is three. Languages and professions. You either add one language to a list of languages you can speak, or add one common, criminal, or wilderness profession. Now, I love the professions in this game. Um, they're almost like skills in other games, and the same basic idea. Languages is something I'm kind of, yeah, not real keen on, but I'm actually going to hold on to that because depending on what my change thing comes up as, I might become, or I might have a background that was with orcs or might be with something else. So I would want to have that language that I associated them with. So you can either add one language to list languages you can speak or add one common criminal wilderness profession. So you now I'm going to do a, I'm going to hold on to that one and just kind of put in a little plus one language. And let's see what's next. Nimble recovery. So I'm going to hop over to my ancestries. That was talents here. So nimble recovery is my first rogue talent. And that is, you can use an action to heal damage equal to your healing rate and then move up to half your speed without triggering free attacks. So when you're in melee combat with another creature or with somebody and you try to move away, you can trigger an attack from them. You know, this one allows me to use an action to heal damage equal to my healing rate. And that was that three, so I can heal three hit points. And then move up to half my speed, which in this case I think my speed was ten, so I could move five without triggering free attacks. So, I'm going to put plus three, whoop, 32, plus three each health and move, or how about disengage, because I know what I'm talking about there, disengage for free. Once you use this talent, you cannot use it again until after you complete a rest, so I'm going to pull right up in the front here, once per rest. And I'll say you can heal, plus three health, and disengage for free. Alright, our second one is trickery. And for this one, once per round, so once per round, you can make an attack roll or a challenge roll with one boon. If you attack with one boon from this talent, your attack deals one die six extra damage. So it's almost like a backstab of sorts. So, yeah, let's see, once per round, put period there. Let's say, uh, I put plus one boon to challenge or attack. And then put if attack, then plus one die six damage. Now, something with the trickery is, even though we have the you know the player has this ability to do a return as a DM, I expect them to tell me how they're using this trickery, and to gain their plus one boon. You know, just because they run up and they attack the monster or something. Yeah, by rules, they get the plus one boon, and, you know, obviously I let them get that. But, I, you know, I really encourage them to tell me what they do to get that plus. How do they trick this monster? You know, do they slide down between its legs and then cut its loins? Or, you know, do they sneak up behind it when it's disengaged or when it's engaged with somebody else and backstab it? Or do they, you know, leap out of a tree and, you know, clamber around it and put in, like, a chokehold or something and stab it in the collarbone? You know, I want them to get creative and tell me how they're doing that trickery and how they get that plus one boon to their roles. So that's it for the basic rogue. You know, this is a level one rogue. You don't get a whole lot right off the bat. Um, you know, as things start to go further on, level two rogues and stuff, you start getting more talents and more ideas. Um, the one last thing here that should be noted is that there's a one die six table here on how your character got rogue training. So I'm going to roll on that just to see what we get. And I got a four. So you learned your techniques to help you become a better criminal. So. 
up I my, my book skills as a criminal. So I just take note of that and you know start mixing this into the background of my character and you know creating it. So now we have our basic ancestry and we have our basic path. You know, now it's time to really start fleshing out this character and you know getting a good idea of who they are and what they are. So changelings are a little different because they they're changeling, you know, and they have the appearance of something else. So let's hop back to the changeling here. All right, the changeling's true age. So, when, you know, as a changeling, I could appear to be, you know, a 12-year-old boy, or I could be a 72-year-old woman. So, we're going to roll, let's see, three dice six. And we'll tell us our things, so. Three dice six. You got a nine. So, you are a young adult. 15 to 25 years old is my real age. So... Age, I'm gonna put real. Uh, what was it again? 15 to 25. I'm gonna say real age is gonna be 24. Okay. Apparent gender. So let's see. This is just gonna be a straight up one dice six to see if I'm male or female. Four. So I appear to be female. So I'm gonna put appear female. So. Next is my apparent ancestry. Now, like I said, since they can change into different things, they generally portray themselves as something else instead of a change lean. So, let's see what I usually uh, look like. This is going to be another three dice six. A Twelve. So, you appear to be human. So, we're going to put in ancestry. I'm going to put in human just so I know that I appear to be human and then we're going to hop over to our human and build my age appearance and appearance or er, age build and appearance so human age it's going to be a three dice six again so oh, three dice six twelve So I appear to be a young adult, 18 to 35. So you know what? I'm going to appear to... I'm just going to stick with 24. I'm going to look like a 24-year-old. Real. I'm going to put... And then... Let's actually do it. Real equals 24. Human equals... Oops. 24. All right. Appear. So real is female and my human is gender is gonna be this just a one by six there's a four so female so okay. now build and form let's see human build is a three dice six again so a ten average height and weight so human equals average. Okay. And last one is appearance. And that is a, another 3 die 6 There's a, pretty much everything in this book runs off of a die 6 So, 7. Plain, uninteresting look upon. People notice you, but your appearance fails to make an impression. So I'm just plain. No, you know. Human average and I'll put plain. Excuse me. All right. Now, changelings themselves, you don't really have to roll up anything for your uh, what you look like or what you are, because they appear to be other things. There isn't an actual form of what they really are. So, just a little quick recap on the basics of what we have so far is that we're a changeling. We look like a human. Our real age is 24. When we appear as our human, we look 24. Um, our real gender is female, and my human or my human appearance is female. As far as a human goes, I'm average and very plain looking. Now this works great because as a rogue and as a former criminal, I don't have any distinguishing marks. I don't have anything that really stands out about me, so I can just blend into the crowd and just look like any other average, basic human being. And that you know that works out great for my path and where I'm headed with this character so far.
So we did the changelings through age and the gender. We did as apparent ancestry. So next we have the changelings background. This is where things start to get pretty interesting and you come up with a lot of different quirks. So this is a die 20. Then 11, you fell in love and your lover is not aware of your true identity. Hmm. So the background. Um, in love and they are not okay, aware of true identity. So apparently, you know, my uh, changeling here is found somebody who she has fell in love with, but this person doesn't know that I'm a changeling. Now let's see, my changeling quirk is a die 20. And this one's a 13, so I speak in whispers. So quirk, or I like to speak in whispers. Speak, I'll put softly and whispers. Doesn't mean I always have to, but that's what my character likes to do. She likes to talk very softly. All right, the personality. Let's see, this is a three die six. Three die six. Well, the six from a personality. I adopt forms that give you power over others because I believe that power ensures my safety. So let's see, personality. So adopt forms that grant power over others. Now you can see how this is starting to come together, being that I'm, you know, and not to sound sexist in any sort of way here, but because my changeling is a female and she takes on a female form, she has uh, somebody who she's fell in love with or who loves her because of who she looks like, obviously not because of her true identity. Um, she speaks very softly and in whispers on, you know, I'm, and then on top of that, she adopts forms of grant power over others. I'm viewing this as a very seductive, very manipulative sort of changeling um, that uses her sexuality and her looks and those type sort of things to get what she wants. Now, it kind of contradicts a little bit in my average and plain looking but just because a person is average and plain looking doesn't mean that they can't be beautiful or they can't still use their looks and their assets to get what they want. So I'm for the appearance, you know, this actually appearance and the build form kind of go together. So I'll just put up here, average and plain looking. Um, most of the races and stuff will have a build form that you follow and then an appearance on top of that. But being that the change names don't have like a real true form of some sort, you, they're one that they don't wear. So you don't, it just, your build form actually is a human. So in this case, these two are going to be the same thing. All right. So, well, I always let my players start with comfortable. So we're just going to fill that in real quick. So let's see, changing personality. So that's the basics on our change lean and our path so far. So you can see how things are starting to come together and the kind of character that we have. Um, we're going to do professions in just a moment. Now, I put in the plus one language here, don't forget because of my rogue, but I ended up not really having any, I wasn't, I didn't take on the form or the appearance of a different race that had a different language that I could use like dwarven, elven, um, halfling, or, or goblin, something like that, dark speech. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just drop that and put it in as a plus one over here for my professions. And it could be criminal, I believe it was, or something else, but I'm going to go with criminal on that. So I'm going to put criminal. All right, so that's the basis on our ancestors. Now we're going to move on to professions. Now, like I said, these are skills. Anything that when I go to do something with my character or... Um, you know, I want to try something. If I believe that one of my professions helps me out with that ability, then I can grant myself a boon. Um, or the DM would anyway, if I can make my argument. And, you know, I've went so far to have players have like two or three professions that might help in a situation. And, you know, in those cases like that, maybe I will grant two, three boons for them because their character, you know, is really good in that field, whatever it might be. So I have plus one criminal. On top of that, you have another two, I believe it is. So uh, I'm going to go two professions. Yep. So then I'm going to put a plus one and another plus one. So again, you could here go through the profession types and pick something that fits your character. Like in this case, obviously something like criminal really fits this character or common might fit this character. Um, 
there's religious, there's martial, wilderness, and academic are your other options. So i am definitely got one criminal from my rogue town, so we're going to hit that first. So I believe it's 1 die 20. Criminal 1 die 20. Yep, let's see what kind of... No, 14. Ooh, okay. So my criminal profession... Profession is pirate. So... I mean, you know, I'm already getting a sort of very swashbuckly sort of idea with this character just because of that. Um, now, since everything else, I'm doing this whole character completely random, I'm just going to roll on my profession types, which are six of them, so it's one day six, to see what the other two are. So the first one is going to be a one, which is academic. So we're going to roll one day 20 and see what academic this person is good at. 19. Academic science. Okay. Academic. Oops. It is science. And our last one is going to be another die six to see what field. This is three. It's going to be another criminal. And then a die 20. 20. Uh, criminal is an urchin. So, like a street urchin. And I'm gonna put street urchin. So you know my parent or my character here, which I haven't given the name to. What did this give me? Elioy Zek. Hmm. Okay. Elioy. I think I, I can go with that. It's kind of different. So Elioy. I'm gonna name her Ellie for short. So Ellie. So let's see, so far Ellie is a changeling who looks like a human, average and plain looking, but she uses her sex appeal and her looks and assets and, you know, personality to grant, or, you know, to, and obviously her quirk here speaking softly and kind of goes with her personality to give herself power over others. Um, she's had some experience as a pirate, so she probably has some seafaring abilities. Maybe she took on something as a, maybe a pirate wench or something. Um, academic science, so somewhere down the line she's learned a little bit of science. I'll have to think about that one a little. And criminal street urchin. So, you know, what I'm thinking is she was sort of a runaway character. Um, you know, once she was became this change, well, she was well, this changeling, um, Maybe she just kind of hit the streets, lived off the streets for a while, pickpocketed, and you know, stole bread from the local markets. And those are your basic street urchin. Um, as she started to go along, maybe she got a job working on a um, the ship of a deck, doing some odd jobs. You know, took out some trips out on the sea. Um, maybe she did some work there on the ship, or you know, she could have easily, if I wanted to get kind of more darker, maybe she was, you know, like I said, the a wench on the ship of some sort or a cook. Um, so she does have some pirate in there, and then academic science, and, uh, that one's interesting. I'm not quite sure how I want to fit that one in yet. I'm thinking maybe dabbling, you know, being a street urchin and being a runaway on the streets, maybe she dabbled in different, um, drugs and herbs and, uh, alchemy, stuff like that, even though that's not, those are kind of different areas maybe to use a science she's not really good at any of them but she understands the properties and the ideas behind some of these different sciences you know maybe laying out on the streets late at night looking up the stars she got some astronomy in there so all right that covers our professions so armor um you know my characters start with comfortable so let's hop over for a weapons we have a dagger which yeah, I'm gonna say she's right handed. Damage, I think it's one die something. One die three, I think, off the top of my head. Just to give a quick thing. Um now I'll have to check out the properties here. We have equipment, let's see. Daggers, yep, one die three, hands, home. Oh, oops. I'm gonna say off. Hands off. I'm going to say she uses it in right hand. It just means it could be an off-handed weapon. Um, let's see, dagger. Yeah, it does one by three. Finesse throwing. So, right here we got finesse thrown and short range. Price is five coppers. Not going to worry about that. No availability comments. So, no, that's the basics on that. What else did she get from being comfortable? 
Let's see. And, 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 and. It's gonna put me comfortable. I have a dagger, stub, or class. So I took a dagger, sling with 20 stones. I have fine clothing, so I'm gonna hop over to my equipment and notes here. I got uh, gear and equipment. I got fine clothing. Uh, backpack cloak. Back cloak. Uh, let's see. Let's see. A week of rations. Uh, water skin rope. Water skin rope. Tinder box. Two torches. A healing potion. Which a healing potion heals whatever your healer rate is. So three. So a healing potion would give me three health. And a pouch contains two dice, six copper. So let's see. Four, nine. So we have nine copper. I actually have wealth right over here. Uh, well, I'm going to keep it under there. I'll just put it on the side. Nine copper. And then I have a... We also have a sh small shield. So I'm going to put that under my basic info. There's shields right here. Small shield. An incantation of a rank zero spell of the GM's choice, which I don't need, or a healer's kit, tool kit, or writing kit. So I'm going to take a tool kit under here. And that would have my thieves' tools and lock picks and that kind of stuff. All right. So let's see. I got a shield. I believe that gives me plus one on my arm, my defense. So let's see. Small shield. Play scale, clothing, and armor. Shield, small shield. I can that does damage a one if that matters, but hands again, it can be used off-handed, but she's dagger in the right, so this is gonna be uh but I'm gonna put it's in her left hand. So she has a small in her left hand, a dagger in her right that she can use. Um and yep, it gives her defense plus one. That copper common sun. Because I got a plus one here, my defense is gonna go up to eleven now. All right, let's see, do I have any money for, yeah, not yet. So, I don't have any money for armor or anything yet, so, you know, my defense is going to steal that one since I don't have any armor. And let's see what else was left in here. Got my ancestries, I got basics there, I got my rogue, I got all my equipment. We don't have any spells. And reference tab is just odds and ends about different references in the book. So... This is the basic character. We have Eliwoy, uh, Ellie Zek. She's a changeling. She appears to be human, a 24-year-old 24 24 human female with a basic average and plain looking. Um, she adopts forms that grant power over others. So as I'm playing out this character, I'm going to take any form that I can that I think will give me power over others, be through sex appeal or intimidation, um, you know, my charisma, looks, whatever I can believe might give me some power but her basic one is you know pretty average and plain looking um she fell in love and they are not aware of a true identity so she has some sort of lover somewhere who is not aware of who she is in real truth so I, you know i'm thinking this would probably be maybe if she had her pirate background her pirate background here maybe it is the um captain of whatever the ship is and she's fell in love and but he since he's not aware of her true identity maybe it's something that she's you know not necessarily ashamed of, but she doesn't want, since she kind of fell in love with him to a degree, maybe she doesn't want to hurt him, so she's, you know, um, kind of cast him out, or maybe she's run away, or, you know, distanced herself from this person so that he doesn't find out her true identity, you know, in turn, that way he isn't crushed, and, you know, I'm just trying to ease the pain in the situation a little. Um, she likes to speak softly and in whispers, which is both a little creepy and it could be seductive as well. Um, she has a bit of a science academic background, and she's a criminal street urchin, so she ran away as a younger kid, you know, dabbled in some different drugs and alchemical um, stuff, you know, studied the stars a little, maybe played around with a little gunpowder and stuff. So, I mean, being with her uh, criminal background of the pirate, I could definitely see me picking up a, a gun, like a small six-shooter or a pistol for this character later on down the road when I have the money. 
Um, and yeah, that's the basic of it, you know, and as things go along, um, you know, the next two levels I would advance in Rogue, and I would start getting some more Rogue abilities that I could add down here. I can take this off for the time being. And, um, you know, I hop back and I guess a few more different abilities, my change lanes, then I go on to my Expert Pass, and I could pick something up. I'm not sure if there's actually a, I don't think there's an actual Pirate Path in here, but I could obviously find something that's close to it. And what do we got? Let's see. Expert pass. Is it fighter, Marco Cleric. Um, expert pass. You know, if I wanted to go with trickery since I'm a rogue already, maybe I could advance into scout, assassin, thief, or warlock. Um, you know, I could definitely see because she has a little bit of science background. Maybe I could, you know, start going into something like an artificer or a witch. Um, with a trickery, I could do something like scout. Um, I don't really see her being an assassin. Maybe thief could fit in quite well, um, depending on how the few adventures went where I was in the uh, novice path levels. Maybe if I did a lot of combat or something, I could kind of go into maybe a fighter. Um, I don't really see her as a berserker or any of those other ones. And yeah, you know, see where the character goes from there. Uh, basic equipment. And this is, you know, this is your level one characters. You can took me through. I don't know how long did it take me. Let's see here. Uh, about a half hour, um, give or take. And, you know, once you do this a few times, I was going through step by step and showing you each thing, but it actually comes through a much, much quicker. So, you know, this is the first video I have on creating the character and getting things set up. The next one I'm going to do is going to be a wizard, and we'll take a look at the different spells that they get and how to build a wizard, because there's a few rules in there. You know, if, if there's one issue that I have with this game, and it, actually it's not even with the game, it's with the book itself, is the layout. They kinda, there's things in there like when I get to the wizard and I go to show you, it'll have the wizard class and it gives you some spells and stuff, but you don't realize how many spells you get or, you know, the rules behind the spells until you read a later, the later chapter about spells. And, you know, it's kinda confusing. A lot of players that I've had that made wizards didn't realize that they had more spells than what they have, or they have more castings than what they think they do. So, you know, that's time for another video. So, I'm the Coffee Bean GM. Um, you know, I'm headed out of here. Like, comment below. You know, let me know if you have any questions. You know, I'd be happy to help out. And uh, have a great day, guys.